Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. What better way to get it started here in Green Bay than that? A gorgeous weather day, 52 degrees, bright sunshine, expecting that throughout the afternoon, and as always, a sellout crowd at historic Lambeau Field. Jim Schwartz, a second-year head coach of the Detroit Lions, won two games a season ago. And boy, with the injuries they've suffered already, they've lost their starting quarterback in Matthew Stafford, their second-leading wide receiver, again not playing today, and Nate Burleson. Their top two running backs have been injured. But they believe in what they're doing. So does Mike McCarthy. His fifth year as head coach in Green Bay. In the regular season, 41 and 29. And you tack on one and two in the playoffs. He's taken him there two of the last three years. Green Bay has won the toss and elected to receive. Yeah, he's he's disappointed right now. <laughs> <laughs> you look at a guy like Clay Matthews, he's going, I wanted to be on the field first. Well, Jordy Nelson will drop back, set to receive the kick from Jason Hansen. Lions 0-3. They lost their first two games of the season by a combined eight points and hung in there against Minnesota last week. Green Bay began the year with a win at Philadelphia. The Buffalo here and then stunned in Chicago Monday night. Nelson from the seven. Tries to turn the corner and is run out of bounds at the 30 and a flag comes in. They may tack on 15 more to this return. Yeah. Mike Carey, our referee. At the end of the run, personal foul, and this roughness on the kicking team. Horse collar. From the end of the run, 15. Correction, major face mask. 15 yards automatic. First down. Yeah, I thought maybe it was a sh late shove out of bounds, but looks like evidently he got a hand on the face mask here. Jordy Nelson getting to the outside. Yeah, that last little turn clearly turned the face mask. That's Dante Wesley just activated for the game today. Well, here comes Aaron Rodgers in the Green Bay offense. And they'll spread him out on first down. Flag down, Rodgers throws, and it's incomplete. Nearly intercepted by Zach Follett, but we'll find out if it was on Green Bay or Detroit. Both of these teams just killed by penalties last week. Offside, defense number 93. Five yards, Billy. First down, five yards to go. That's Kyle Vandenbosch. You're going to see right here off this edge here, off this side. You, we saw it a little bit later. The guard is signaling to the quarterback in gun when to snap the ball, and I think the Detroit Lions got a real jump on it. A little too early on the jump, but uh, got a jump on it. We're going to have to watch that to see if indeed in the gun they're picking up on that key. So 20 yards and penalties after the first two plays of the game. And to give us to John Cook, who will share time in the backfield today along with Brandon Jackson. Aaron Rodgers, a pro bowler a season ago. So many weapons. Jennings, driver, the wideouts. And the very talented tight end for Michael Finley. And up front, Clifton and Tauscher have played great football here for a long time, but both have come under a lot of fire, especially after last week's game against Chicago. Second in a yard, and Jackson slips a couple of tackles and is inside the 35-yard line. Take a look at Detroit defensively. They overhauled their defensive front during the offseason, drafting and Dominican Sue trading for Corey Williams, a former Packer, and bringing in Vandenbosch from Tennessee. 
linebacking core. They were without DeAndre Levy, their starting middle linebacker the first two. They're without him again today. Followed in Johnson back from injuries. And Delmas, one of the top rookie defenders in the NFL last year. Jackson inside the 30, down to the 28-yard line. The running game basically non-existent against Chicago on Monday night. The combination of Kuhn and Jackson rushed for a total of 43 yards, and half of those came on one carry. And this is a tough Detroit front seven to run against. They're very physical. It's the back end you got a chance, you got a sense that Aaron Rodgers was interested in going at. They haven't been together a long time. That secondary of Detroit Lions, the Packers are going to try to take advantage of that. They throw it on second down. And Rodgers under pressure to the end zone. It is a touchdown to Donald Driver. Well, they're Lambo leaping, but they kind of got away with one here because you're going to see right here on the outside, we're going to end up with two players in the same spot. I'm not sure whether Driver or Finley was wrong, but I don't know if they were supposed to be stacked right on top of one another like that. Aaron Rodgers just threw it deep to the outside and says, when do you all come down with it? Because there's two of you there. Point after now by Mason Crosby to make it 7-0 Green Bay. The Packers all-time leader in receptions. Donald Driver in the early score in the opening possession. That didn't take long. Well, you know, life's good for you when you can stack two receivers in the same place mm. and still come up with a touchdown. So this is obviously not the way Detroit wanted to start. But now this is the challenge for them, the Detroit Lions. How are they going to respond to the early adversity on the road in a place like Lambeau Field? And of course, playing away from home has been unkind to these Lions. Losers of 22 consecutive road games. Stefan Logan, dangerous return man. And a nice return up to the 30-yard line. Of course, the Lions are without their number one draft pick from last season, quarterback Matthew Stafford, was injured in the season opener against Chicago, so Sean Hill replaces him. And a lot of offensive weapons, as Brian mentioned earlier, Calvin Johnson, Brian Johnson for Nate Burleson, and the tight end Pettigrew along with Tony Scheffler. Dominic Riola and Jeff Backus have been on that front line since 2001. And all Matthew Stafford can do is stand and watch. They're hoping to have him back within the next couple of weeks. Fake on first down, and down goes Hill in the arms of B.J. Raji. Well, this this can typically happen after a play fake here. Golid, a good solid. Here you got Raji inside. A good solid play fake. You commit everybody to protection. It's a two-man route, but because it's just a two-man route, you have to wait it out, wait it out. Couldn't hold out long enough, Raji. A rare sack from the interior of the defense. Already 14 sacks this year for Green Bay. The 14th last year didn't come until week 10. Pettigrew, the tight end. With some of that yardage and then some back following the sack. It'll bring up third down and long for Green Bay. On defense, Ryan Pickett, B.J. Raji, Cullen Jenkins. Jenkins with a sack in each of the first three games. Speaking of sacks, Clay Matthews, six of them in the first two games. And the reigning NFL Defensive Player of the Year, number 21, Charles Woodson. Good running and good patient running after the catch by Brandon Pettigrew, and that's the first down. Pettigrew has become here. He's just on the right side. This is a really delayed screen. You don't often see it to the tight end. Let the rush get up the field. 
and then Pettigrew. It hurt them last year when Pettigrew went down with about five games to go. A healthy Brandon Pettigrew brought in Tony Scheffler. Good one-two combination of tight end for the Lions. Well, he was injured, you may remember, on that Thanksgiving Day game. They're on first down, good protection. And across the middle to the 42 yard line, that's Bryant Johnson, who's replacing Nate Burleson with an injured ankle as a number two receiver. And this one two punch, Scott Lenahan, the offensive coordinator, loves a two tight end offense. They went off, went out in the offseason specifically to get Tony Scheffler so that they could major in this two tight end alignment. Best, the electrifying rookie out of Cal to the 35, and a flag comes in from behind the quarterback hill. Thrown by the referee Mike Carey. Personal foul, major face mask, offense number 12, 15-yard penalty, still first down. You know, Brian, for both of these teams, 18 penalties, a franchise record for Green Bay last week. Detroit had nine penalties, and seemingly every time they had one, it wiped out a big play. Well, you're in the, on the road, and you, 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 they run the length of the field, Green Bay does, to score, and you got something going by Detroit. And now, all of a sudden, instead of going second and five, you're now first and forever. This is the type of thing that Detroit has been shooting themselves in the foot with, and they've got to get past it. Escapes trouble still on his feet and dives across midfield to the Green Bay 48 yard line. You know, defensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers, Don Capers, it was interesting. A visit with Dom, he says, You know what? I'm a terrible second and five defensive coordinator. No one's good at it. But if you're good on first down, that allows you to get you to your fun stuff, as he called it, with all the different packages, pressures, and blitzes that they can bring. This longer down and distance is going to be tough under the Detroit Lions. Kevin Smith, number 34, is standing next to Hill. His first game action this year, all the way back from an ACL tour. Pettigrew, the catch, a good coverage by Charles Woodson, third down and 12 upcoming. Let's send it back to Los Angeles for a game break with Kurt Menefee. Jets and Bills and LaDainian Thomas improving. There's still life in those legs. Five carries, 42 yards, and a touchdown on the opening drive against Buffalo. He passes Tony Dorsett for seventh on the all-time list and gives the Jets a 7-0 lead. Tom and Brian. What a start for LaDainian Tomlinson his first year with the Jets. Third and 12, and open is Scheffler. Did he have possession and make the catch? Yes, he did, down to the 19-yard line, and what a throw by Hill. Wow, this is a heck of a catch by Scheffler. They motion Calvin Johnson into a lumped up bunch set with Johnson and the tight ends. He double catches. Did he have possession all the way through? We may see a challenge by Green Bay. Nope, they were there on that sideline, said it was good. Kevin Smith's first carry of this season, and he says hello to A.J. Hawk. You know, we've talked about the process. We've seen this time and again. Shuffler, does he have control? Both feet in bounds, clearly. And can he maintain control? Doesn't look like the ball moves at all. His upper body did, but the ball did not. Green Bay right on that sideline. They saw it the same way. That word process is a four-letter word. Oh, my oh, gosh. And they used to hear that worked in their favor there. Ball is loose. They mentioned Kevin Smith playing for the first time today. A very productive runner his first two years. Rushed for... 1700 yards added 80 receptions his first couple of years before tearing up his knee and this is typical a guy that's been out that mesh between the quarterback and the running back not as clean as you'd like lethal down in here in the red zone by right, third down got a lot of big bodies out here tight end shifted out up into here a big body big body down at the bottom Four-man rush. 
The receiver fell down, and it's intercepted by A.J. Hawk. Green Bay football. Jay Hawk, his sixth career interception, and stifles Detroit and Sean Hill inside the red zone. Green Bay with a 7 0 lead. Good slant. Future Michael Finley, and that's another first down out to the 34-yard line. Let's go back to the interception. Yeah, this is a quarterback's first night, worst nightmare. You're gonna see Job at best coming out of the backfield with just a little angle route. Right there, he goes down. AJ Hawk closing on the ball to make a tackle, but all of a sudden there's the ball right in my gut. As a quarterback, you just have nightmares seeing something like this. Do a run. He's got a real loose secondary. We caught it, Brian Phillips. And lots of running room through that loose secondary for Brandon Jackson. A flag comes in. This may be a penalty against C.C. Brown. This is one of those deals where you're in a shell defense. The quarterback checks to a run. You want to come down and make a play as a safety. There were fouls by both teams on the play. Holding offense number 88, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 93. Those fouls offset. It's the first down. So the hold on Finley. And against Detroit, it's Vandenbach. To Michael Finley right here. Let's see what they caught him for. Coming up to that next level as he starts to lose him. I don't know about that. Now he's going down. Oh, I don't. He said 93. I, I don't know that he didn't mean 23. I guess. Didn't quite see the late hit. And Rodgers wants a timeout. Play clock down to three. Green Bay in the opening quarter and early seven nothing lead at Lambeau. Well, the officials did get the right guy, Kyle Vandenbosch, coming in late here, giving a, a late shot like this. So they got they got the penalty right. Too bad it's offsetting or something like that. We invite you to support the NFL's a crucial catch breast cancer awareness campaign by bidding on authentic game day NFL pink products and experiences at NFL.com/auction. Proceeds benefit the American Cancer Society and. Lots of pink out on the field today and up here in the broadcast booth. Good to see. I'm pinked up. First down, Rodgers rolls and finds Finley. He's wrapped up by Landon Johnson up to the 42-yard line, about a yard shy of another Packer first down. Well, Aaron Rodgers has gone from a solid first-year starter in the shadow of Brett Favre to one of the game's top young quarterbacks over the last two years. The fourth most passing yards in the NFL. The fourth most touchdown passes with 30 of them last season. Second and two is denied first down yardage. Julian Peterson coming up to make the stop. The, the key to this Green Bay Packer offense, Tom, is the fact that they've got so many weapons, and Aaron Rodgers does just a great job of distributing the ball. Everybody gets involved along the way. Everything from Finley, you can see Greg Jennings, Donald Driver. These are attempts, not necessarily completions. You can see how balanced they are in terms of the way they attack a defense. I don't care. 
Call the 32, Rodgers out of the shotgun. And he'll hand it off to Kuhn. And he didn't get there. At least it doesn't look like he did from up here. Well, you hate to go so horizontal on a short yardage play like that. I'm sure they would have preferred to get downhill. Gunther Cunningham, the defensive coordinator, dialed it up right. This front seven is a good front seven, Tom. People have had a tough time running against it. They put good pressure. It's the back end, the secondary, that's been a little given the Detroit Lions a bit of a problem so far. Stefan Logan waits back. He muffed a punt last week. It was a real momentum changer. And there is a terrible kick by Tim Mastay, and the crowd already letting him have it. Special teams have been a major black eye for the Packers already this year. A 12 yard punt. Coming up next on Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. Some will see the Cardinals in charges. Most of the country will see the Redskins and the Eagles. And of course, that will mark the return to Philadelphia of Donovan McNabb. Yeah, you can't imagine the emotions Don McNabb is going to have going back into Philly with those fans. They'll be respectful. They'll 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 treat him respectfully. But then during the game, it'll turn. Well, they called it a 21-yard punt, changing the initial spot of the football, but still great field position for the Lions and an incompletion on first down. Well, for the Lions, they've got to maintain some type of continuity. They lead the league in three and outs. That first series, they moved down the field, but then had the big penalty. They can stay away from those three and outs, try to get some rhythm and continuity. They can have a chance to move the ball. Johnson, his first catch of the day. It's very close to a first down, depending on the spot. Needed to get to the 47. And that's where they put it down. They may have to bring out the sticks for a measurement. Calvin Johnson, one of the big physical gifted receivers in this league. They haven't had a lot of talent to balance him with. And so therefore he hasn't shown up a lot. But the tight ends we talked about, job at best in the lineup now, might give us a chance to get the ball to Calvin Johnson more. The spot was good enough for a first down. This is Javid Best, who in the third quarter last week against Minnesota injured his right big toe. He already had a left big toe injury. Well, that game, the second week of the season, the second of his career, coach, 78 rushing yards, two wow. touchdowns, nine catches. For 154 yards and a touchdown. What an afternoon. And they got to come up with a different term other than turf toe, because that just doesn't sound like it should hurt, but it's very painful. And that's something for him to be back as quick as he has been with a painful turf toe. Open receiver across the middle. Is again Calvin Johnson close to another the first down. You talk about turf toe, let's never forget. Jack Lambert retired from the NFL because of turf toe. And there's varying degrees. I mean, it can be serious enough career ending, as you said, for a Jack Lambert. The fact that Java Best is able to get back out this quickly on a turf toe indicates it's one of those versions that's very manageable. But I promise you, he's getting something in that toe at game's end. That's a hurting puppy. Johnson, another first down catch. And another yeah. penalty on the line. See, All start, it, it, offense number 66, five yard Kenley. Still first down. That's Steven Peterman, the right guard. It just drive Jim Schwartz nuts. This is the type of lack of continuity that kills you as a team that you've got to overcome when you're a Detroit Lion team fighting all the battles both on and off the field that you got to fight when you're a team that's two and whatever two and thirty three or thirty four. Uh, those are the types of things you got to overcome. That's the fourth false start penalty this year against Peter. But best will get some yardage and then some back inside the 40 carries to the 37. And before third down let's check in with Curtin Minifee. 
from Los Angeles. And we will check in on the St. Louis Rams trying to win their second in a row. Sam Bradford hooking up with Brandon Gibson against Seattle. And just like that, the Rams are up by a touchdown in the first quarter. Tom and Brian. Sam Bradford's going to be a good one to me, Coach. Yeah, he is. He, he, boy, these last two games really looks like this young man's going to be special. A gain of 10 on the carry by Bus is second down and five. And it's Jerome Felton out of the backfield, and he's very close to another Lions first down. We're seeing more and more of the screens to tight end, screens to fullback. Typically, you don't see it to those inside guys, but so far, very effective for both teams. Well, that'll be the end of the first quarter. And Detroit hanging in there. A 7 0 lead as Fox NFL Sunday continues after these messages. Set to begin the second quarter, 7 0 Green Bay, but Detroit on the move. A first down at the Packer 32. Blitz coming, they pick it up, and that's Scheffler. And runs right through Woodson to the 22 yard line, close to another first down. Now Detroit piling up the yards, 117 yards of offense so far, and a good start. Well, they got to just quit shooting themselves in the foot. They, they've got the talent like we talked about in these critical areas. Now, they're in field goal position at the very least. They can't do anything to take themselves out of that position. The second and one after the completion of Sheffield. And he'll throw it. Great protection. Looking at the end zone and wide open for the score is Calvin Johnson. Wow, this is a little like the Green Bay score. I'm not quite sure this is the way it was drawn up because both Scheffler and Johnson, just like we saw the Green Bay score, they're kind of stacked on top of one another. Clearly, Green Bay kind of got lost on the back end because the both of them were standing there with no one else but themselves to catch the ball. Now you can see uh, uh, breaking way down. Johnson's come. Bryant Johnson goes down on the outside. Uh, he, I don't know whether they brought all the attention there or not. But. Point after is good by Jason Hansen. So Calvin Johnson, his second touchdown reception. We're tied at seven. That's why you will not survive. They play 63 yards, capped off on the 23-yard touchdown pass from Hill to Calvin Johnson to tie this game at seven in the opening minute of the second quarter. For robbery that goes all the way back to 1930 when the Lions were known as the Portsmouth, Ohio Spartans. The Lions have not won in the state of Wisconsin in 19 years. Trying to change that here today. Nelson from the five. And he's up to the 28 yard line. Lions fans have been wondering where is Calvin Johnson? Here he is for six. Green Bay with the football, starting this drive from its own 28 yard line in a 7 7 game with Detroit. Rodgers, a very good run. Slides up to the 34 yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown. What happened, Brian? Well, we got a lot of Johnsons. I think we got the right one now. You're going to see Scheffler and Johnson stacked on top of one another. Now they run what's called just a little switch route, trying to break coverage, confuse the secondary, and work. Morgan Burnett gets out of position. They end up kind of in the same spot, but they open up that little deep slant hole, and Calvin Johnson comes away with the score. There's Johnson and Johnson sitting right there next to each other. Just pick one. Checking again, you can see anytime he gets the shell coverage, he's trying to go to a run. And they get it to Jackson, and both times he's called for a run. The good games by Jackson, close to a first down. 
Let's go back to Los Angeles to Kurt Menefee. Earlier today, the Saints' Lance Moore fumbled the one-yard line of Carolina. He makes up for it, holding on this time and somehow sneaking into the end zone. Touchdown for Moore and the Saints, and they lead it 7-0 early in the second. Tom and Brian. Well, thank you very much, Kurt. We saw just a great football game last weekend. Saints losing in overtime to Atlanta. And how about Atlanta today losing 14-0. To San Francisco. Third down and short. Fake it one way. And Rodgers rolls. And Jordy Nelson fell down. It looked like Jermichael Finley was the man they were looking for when he rolled out to the right, but Finley got tied up in traffic. And he's lucky it wasn't like we just saw the interception by the Packers of Detroit. That's typically your deep comeback route. The guy falls down and the defender steps in front of it. Aaron Rodgers wisely or fortunately, depending upon your point of view. Through the ball way. And Mass Day drops back in punt formation. As does Stefan Logan. They thought Green Bay was in business. Penalty flag down after the Packers scored on their first drive. They've been stopped the last two. They're catching the 11, but again, we wait on the flag. Thrown behind the line of scrimmage. 52 yard punt by Master. He may have to do it again. There's no foul for illegal formation on the defense. The punting team shifted, allowing the nose guard to allow up over the center. Timeout. So that's like the Rubik's Cube explanation there. You figure it out while we're away. Well, 44 to play until halftime. The Lions and the Packers are tied at seven. Detroit with a football from its own 11. And they have moved the ball up and down the field against this Green Bay defense on two drives. Robert Best burst up the middle. And has a first down or close to it up to the 21. What was the penalty there? Well, let's see if I can explain this. You're not allowed to line up a guy directly over the center for safety purposes. It can stop right there, except now he's in a threatening position right here. So you are now allowed to line up because there's a possibility of a direct snap to the up back, like a wedge or something of that nature. That removes the penalty that says you can't line up over the center. Good call by the officials. There's a gain of nine. And on second down, incomplete to best. Some of the early scores around the National Football League. We talked about the Niners leading 14 0. A new offensive coordinator, no longer Jimmy Ray, there in San Francisco. Yeah, and Atlanta may be coming off the, the residual uh, high of that big win in New Orleans. Got to re regroup here real quickly. Jets out to that 7 0 lead on Buffalo. Some feel that's a trap game for the Jets. Third and a yard. Bunched up. We'll see if there's enough for the first down, but a flag did come in from the secondary. Two of them, in fact. I'll be interested in seeing what this is. Both were very definitively. 12 men on the field. Yeah. Defense. Five yard penalty. Enforcement ends up first down. We talked about it last week, coach. 18 penalties. 18. A franchise record. One which nullified a touchdown, and two others that canceled game turning interceptions. And that was one. Mike McCarthy breaks them into two categories pre and post snap is one category, and then those that happy with, happen within the body of the play. That was a pre or post snap play. Those are the kind as a coach drive you nuts because that is just focus and discipline as opposed to holding or pass interference that just happens during the course of the game. First down. Best loses the ball. It looks like Green Bay has it. And Mike Carey is saying Packer football from behind the line of scrimmage. A lot of pushing and shoving going on, and a flag comes in. So there's a lot to straighten out here. The officials have already gathered. 
to try and figure out everything that just transpired, beginning with a turnover, then pushing and shoving, then a late flag. The fumble was recovered by Green Bay, after which there was a personal foul. 77, unnecessary roughness. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, you talked about shooting yourself in the foot, and here we are again. Yeah, I mean, the Packers have not looked particularly sharp. Job at best, not getting a good handle on it. Just comes out. He wasn't hit. The ball wasn't necessarily stripped. And now it's a free-for-all, and the frustrations play into it as well. I don't think he actually got his hand on the ball, Tom. I think it just came out as he went to make the cut. Well, it was Mike Neal, the rookie out of Purdue, who made the penetration behind the line of scrimmage. Neal's been bothered with a rib injury, a second round draft choice this year. And then big Ryan Pickett covered it up. Well, the Packers haven't looked particularly sharp, but this is an area of the field in the red zone that Aaron Rodgers is absolutely lethal down here. He does not make mistakes, and all this guy is very productive. 40 touchdowns and one interception in the red zone. In his career. Here are the numbers. Well, after a second turnover by the Lions, Rodgers looking around and just throws it away. Great coverage in the end zone. And wait, another flag has come in. This ten, yeah, this tends to be defensive holding down here. Before the pass, holding. Defense number 27. Five yard pulley automatic. First down. That's Alfonso Smith. And that typically will happen down in the red zone because you've got receivers crossing routes, shallow drags, they call them to where you're just out running the guy and when you get into a man coverage you want to try to slow the guy down get whatever advantage you can you get guys crossing picking off one another it's a dog fight in the pits inside the 10 yard line. Rodgers on first and goal pump fake and down he goes back at the 14 yard line Brown one of the late hit on Delmas who could forget the hit Delmas put on Michael Finley a season ago. And not only the hit which angered the Packers and Finley in particular, but the celebration by Delmas after the hit. Now, this is an emotional player, and he's got a little bit of a history with it as well. He and Finley have gone round and round with one another. You're going to see last year Finley coming over the middle. Delmas, this was both flag and fine, hitting the defenseless receiver. Both, both receivers kind of blew it off, but they're very aware of one another. Rodgers looking around on second down. Completes a pass to Jackson out of the backfield. But covered by Julian Peterson. Averill putting pressure on Rodgers, who's been under some pressure throwing early on today. Well, we talked about the fact that this front seven of the Detroit Lions, they're second in the league. They're tied with the Philadelphia Eagles for pressure on the quarterback. Right now, Green Bay Packers just don't seem to have the focus that we've seen, in Penn, even in the Monday night loss. They look like they could go up and down the field. They just don't seem in sync right now. This is a third and goal from the 14. What a pass by Aaron Rodgers and a touchdown to Finley. What? I don't know if you can make a better throw than that. No, you know what? And a turn keeps coming back to me that Aaron Rodgers uses. He says, you can throw Jermichael Finley open. It's an interesting term, meaning I can throw the ball anywhere. I can put it where I have to put it. He's going to come up with it. Going after by Mason Crosby is good. Like the, the eyes of Aaron Rodgers.
And the arm. Oh, my. What a play. Welcome back to Lambeau Field in Green Bay. The home team in front by a touchdown. And after the turnover, the best fumble, second turnover of the game by Detroit. The touchdown pass to Jermichael Finley. It's a 12th consecutive game here in Lambeau where a Green Bay takeaway has led to points. That's something they certainly muscled up on a point into that category a year ago. Forcing turnovers and turning the turnovers into points. Logan. Up to the 27. I still can't believe the throw made by Rodgers. We got to go back and look at that again. I want you to watch here. Aaron Rodgers said being covered is a relative term for Jermichael Finley. Stop right there. That's right. The, the linebacker right here is Julian Peterson. C.C. Brown's over the top. This guy is not open. He's covered. But as Aaron Rodgers said, being covered takes on a different definition when it comes to Jermichael Finley. Man, what a throw. All right, lines back on offense. Sean Hill on the shotgun. Bill has looked very good today. Some might say, well, he's thrown an interception. Yes, and that's because the intended receiver, job at best, fell down. Let's check in down on the sideline with Carissa Thompson. The Packers have points on the board, but they're now down a few men. Nick Barnett went into the locker room with a left wrist injury. His return is questionable. Meanwhile, safety Morgan Burnett went in to get his knee x-ray, and he will also be questionable, guys. Well, those are a couple of big hits, Carissa. Thank you very much. Barnett, only 20 tackles shy of becoming the Packers' all-time leader in that category. Some will tell you he's a very heart and soul of this defense. Best looking for first down yardage. About a yard or two shot. And what that does to a defense, Tom, when you've got two starters down, it tends to calm down some of the things you want to do. You're worried about the guy coming in. Does he know where he belongs? It, it eliminates some of the fun stuff, as Dom Capers calls it, in terms of some of the pressures. We're going to look to see if maybe Green Bay is a little more stayed with their package with two starters out. Derek Martin has replaced Morgan Burnett. Nick Barnett back on the field, third and one. Had an eye on Brian Johnson, and it's broken up by Tremont Williams, and Detroit is forced to punt. And we put it back to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. And no breaking this one up. Falcons against the 49ers. Matt Ryan hooking up with Harry Douglas. Eight-yard score. Remember, Douglas missed all of last year with an injury. So that's his first touchdown since 2008. It's still a seven-point Niner lead. Tom? Thank you very much, Kurt Menefee. We'll keep an eye on that one today in Atlanta. Nick Harris punts it away. And Tremont Williams from the 20. Good return up to the 32. 8.20 to play until halftime. And Rodgers leading the offense back to the field. Coach, you were talking during the commercial break about Green Bay so far. They've not been very sharp, even though the Packers do have a seven-point lead. Yeah, and they're up by seven, and, and that's the sign of a good team. But they have they don't seem to have any rhythm right now. They've gotten a turnover down the red zone where obviously Aaron Rodgers is lethal and proved it again with a phenomenal throw to Michael Finley. I'm sure Mike McCarthy would like to see a bit of rhythm and continuity out of his offense right now. to Finley and he's shot down after a three yard gain up to the 35 and some extra curricular activity takes place again Finley and Jonathan Wade and Aaron saying all right let's call him down and get back in the huddle you see some of the leaders offensively they've run it a little better when they've run it but they've taken advantage of the two turnovers by Detroit 
And those turnovers have turned into touchdowns. This time, Corey Williams, a former Packer, comes down the line to make the tackle. He had a couple of outstanding years with Green Bay in 06 and 07, seven sack seasons. Then was traded to Cleveland prior to 08. Really didn't fit that 3 4 scheme there. They're happy to have him in the Motor City. They are. He's a great compliment to Dominic and Sue. And those two, that's a lot of beef in the middle that allows Cliff Averill and Kyle Vandenbosch on the outside to kind of run him up. Got a look at Burnett back on the Green Bay sideline. Third down, Vandenbosch across the line of scrimmage. And Rodgers just throws it down the field. And it's caught by Donald Driver at the 15. Now, will this be against Vandenbosch? One would suspect. Offside defense. Yep. Is declined. The play results. First down. This is a just draw it up in the sand. Aaron Rodgers knew he had a freebie here. You're just going to see going vertical down the field. They're looking back, going, "What's going on? Where'd he go?" And I'll just keep running. And the secondary loses sight of it with an Aaron Rodgers breaking contain. Knew he had a freebie. No matter what he did, he got a mulligan on it. So turns out to be a huge game. 48 yards to be exact. They're now in that red zone again as Rodgers. Greg Jennings touchdown. is unbelievable in the red zone where he is putting these balls this is these are two well thrown touchdown passes as you will see in the National Football League to Jermichael Finley and Greg Jones. Tenth time in his career that Aaron Rodgers has thrown at least three touchdowns in a game and we're not even through the opening half. Flag came in on the extra point. Illegal formation. Defense number 99 was lined up, heads up over the center. Five yard penalty will be accepted on the kickoff. That is seven penalties for over 60 yards in the first half on Detroit. Well, tomorrow on an all new house, time is running out for a desperate woman, and the team has only one chance to uncover the truth. It's an intense race against the clock with an ending that will leave you stunned. An all new house. 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Well, Tom, we've touched on it. You know, Aaron Rodgers, when you're talking about the quarterbacks in this league, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, he is clearly belongs in the conversation of those elite guys. But I tell you from the Detroit side, I, I like what Jim Schwartz is doing, the people he's brought in. But I got to tell you, the way they're carrying themselves right now, they, they feel like a defeated football team, like they're waiting for that next bad thing to happen. And that's part of that cultural change that Jim Schwartz is having to go through. Keep in mind now, he took over a franchise that was worse than an expansion franchise. What went on in that organization for the eight years previous to him being there, borders on criminal. He's got an uphill battle here. He's adding good people into the mix, but he's got a way to go. Real good kick this time. And it looked like Logan lost it in the sun there momentarily. He's very fortunate. A Packer didn't get down there to cover that thing up. Well, there's a new way to play fantasy football. Make real-time substitutions in a 20-minute fast-paced game. New games start every 15 minutes. You can play right now at foxsports.com slash live. That's as good a fantasy quarterback as you're going to get. 
Boy, his numbers are. I, we'll have to sometime go back and see those those numbers now. You know, 41 touchdowns, one just the ratio alone. Forget how many he's done down. 42 now. 42. Just the ratio alone is stunning. And for those of you that didn't see when we put it up on the screen we're talking about in the career of Aaron Rodgers you include the two touchdowns today inside the red zone in his career 42 touchdowns against one red zone interception that just shows focus and poise in the most critical part of the field and you got to give Mike McCarthy and the Packers staff some credit for what they're dialing up down there and the way they bring focus to it. Pettigrew with a nine yard reception. They're coming after Hill. He drops it off out of the backfield to Kevin Smith, and he's out to the 39 and a first down, and we kick it back to Los Angeles to Kurt Menefee. The battle of Ohio between the Browns and Bengals. Carson Palmer hooking up with Terrell Owens, who gets away from Sheldon Brown and takes it 78 yards for his first score as a Bengal, tying the game at 10 apiece late in the second quarter. Tom and Bryant. Well, they've been wondering in Cincinnati, is Carson Palmer going to be the Carson Palmer of old since he injured his elbow a couple of years ago? And I thought a healthy Carson Palmer would look better at this point and possibly this would get him started. It was sacked by Matthews. Jared Bush nearly got him. And then Matthews cleaned it up for his seventh sack. Well, that's one of the patented pressures off the edge here. Clay Matthews with an additional defender coming on the outside puts a lot of pressure on that. Just the relentless pursuit of a Clay Matthews. Nothing fancy about that. No spin, no setup. Just I am not going to be stopped. Second down and 14. Four man rush, Pettigrew. Taken down to the 43 yard line. You know, the Green Bay Packers, Mike McCarthy is, has some strategic coaches. One of them, he's hired Kevin Green, the former Pro Bowler. You can see his numbers here. He is a pass rush specialist, and his job is to get guys like Clay Matthews and Frank Zombo and, uh, and Jones. I tell you what, he's got them honed into the style of play that Don Capers wants, and there's no better student than Clay Matthews. Catch is made for a first down. To Pettigrew, we ask Kevin Green, what are you looking for in a man who will chase down that quarterback out of a linebacker? Looking to hit somebody with very bad intentions, crushing people, and enjoying it, having fun. That's a certified hunter. <laughs> Spoken well, like Kevin ooh, Green. Kevin Green was a certified hunter, I'll tell you that. No one enjoyed it more than he did, and he's imparting it on his young, young players now. Kevin Smith, his first game this season, coming all the way back from reconstructed knee surgery. Now, you can tell by Detroit right now, they've taken the game plan and kind of folded up and put it in their back pocket because down 21 7, they got to do something to move the ball. And like they've done the whole game, Tom, they have moved the ball. If they can avoid making the mistake and trying to stray out of the grasp of this guy and this guy, you're lucky he's not playing today because that would be a two headed monster. It's fun to watch these guys work and the admiration they have for one another. But Detroit has moved the ball. If they can just not get in their own way, they might be able to pull this thing back into a striking distance. AJ Hawk off the corner. But they dump it off to Javid Best. And he's run out of bounds inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. It's a nice drive. They're piecing together. I'm impressed with Sean Hill in the face of all that pressure and those hunters that we just talked about. He is maintaining some poise and delivering the ball, looking downfield for the big shots and dropping them off for some solid yardage. This is a big series for Detroit. They can pull in a score here. We may have ourselves a ball game. Hill was hit on 18 out of 22 for nearly 200 yards in his opening half. Smith 
broke a tackle of Woodson. Nearly slipped a second tackle, and he's to the 21-yard line. That'll bring up second down and four as we're closing down to the two-minute warning. We'll see if Detroit tries to get off another play. They don't appear to be in a big hurry. No, they, they've got all their timeouts, as we can see up here. And now you bring it down to the two-minute, because the last thing you want to do is score and give it back to Green Bay. So they're opting to go this route. Two-minute warning. Detroit knocking on the door. Turnover is always important, but what's the result of the turnovers? Yeah, Detroit is down 2-0 to Green Bay in the turnover uh, department, but the key is one of those turnovers led to a touchdown, and one took at least three, possibly seven off the board. That's a 10-14 to point swing. And another Detroit penalty. Offense number 45. Five yard penalty is still second down. Well, it's painful. I mean, that is eight. Look at Jim. Eight you can penalties. Look. Jim, Jim's ready to do some damage here now. It's not like the crowd was into it and loud. That's just focus in the red zone. Uh, coming away with points. You can see right there. None too happy with that. So a second and four turns into a second down and nine. Bill throws it out of bounds. Third and nine. And here's the dicey part. You're a third and nine against the Dom Capers coach defense. You know they're going to dial this thing up. Scott Lanahan in his play call not only has to take into account how do I get the first down, but at minimum I can't back up more than two, three yards here because Dom Capers is going to bring something. I may get myself sacked out of field goal position here. So a lot goes into this play call. Here comes the heat. Well, it's a jailbreak. And look at Pettigrew. Inside the 10, down to the 7 on the tight end screen to Brandon Pettigrew. And how many times have we seen that now, Tom, when you bring pressure, the screen has become a very effective tool. You're just going to see a jailbreak here and then stop right here. That's a whole bunch of folks in behind the play that gives you an opportunity to make a play down the field. First and goal at the nine. Best shot down inside the five to the three yard line. Well, that's a nice play call right there. They have Johnson at the bottom of the screen, runs across the field, and Best comes back the other way wide open. Goodness. Come on, you got to muster it now. You're just getting body blow after Jim. Oh, boy, I don't know what Jim's going to do with this, but I don't want to come back to the sideline if I'm the one that had the penalty. You're down in scoring position. You can bring this game back into it. Now the hard part is you got to refocus. Go on to the next play. We'll deal with that later. Now we got to come up with another call instead of being on the two or three. We're back on the 19. That is holding on Peterman his second big penalty today. The first and goal from the 19. And now the sack by Jenkins who has a sack in each of the first four games. You might want to sack that dance. Yeah, that uh, well, you don't get to do it very much. That's two sacks from the interior of the line. You're going to see him coming off the edge right into here. When you can get pressure from the interior of your pass rush, that is huge because it's in the face of the quarterback. Nothing disrupts a quarterback more than that pressure. You can't step up away from it like you can an outside pass rush. Second and goal from the 29. Best good running room. He picks up nine yards. Third and goal from the 20. We're down to the final 20 seconds. Well, now, last week, you may remember, with a chance to take a shot at the end zone, Jim Schwartz took a lot of heat for letting the clock run down, sent out the field goal unit. First. 
And now, in an almost identical situation here today, Schwartz, who got quite defensive when asked about that decision last week to not take a shot at the end zone and kick a field goal, this week says, all right, we're going to call timeout. I think one of the differences here is, is that he's got two timeouts. You can take it down as far as you want. You know that you can take a shot to the end zone, throw the ball underneath. You can run the ball if you want. I can use that other timeout with 14 seconds, and I got a good chance of not giving the ball back to Green Bay. Visa halftime report coming up shortly. We'll bring you up to date on Donovan McNabb's return to Philadelphia today. We'll check in with Joe and Troy from Philly. We'll have all the scores and highlights from around the NFL. Third and goal. Johnson in traffic, and that is a touchdown to Calvin Johnson. Nearly identical to the play we saw at the end of the game in Chicago, but this one will stand for the Lions. I'm surprised he didn't carry that one back to the sideline just to make sure he completed the process. <laughs> we talk about a throw by Aaron Rodgers, two for touchdowns. Right here, you're going to see this matchup. Calvin Johnson, all six foot five of them has about a 42 inch vertical jump. That's just trying to make something happen using his size. Big play for the Detroit Lions. We got ourselves a ball game. Right in over the top of Woodson and Derek Martin. And the point after is good so they take that shot to the end zone. And Johnson his second touchdown reception of the day. You know this is what this guy can do. And this is what great players do. There, there's no reason to throw this ball. He's got a guy in front a guy in back. You know you, you can't draw that up but you got to go to the talents of your big people. People wonder why we haven't seen more of Calvin Johnson. Part of it is he's had a boatload of different quarterbacks. Now he's got one in Sean Hill throwing to him. He's got to be excited about being given the opportunity. This is a, a tremendous athlete. Sean Hill not a lot of vertical jump there. Not quite the same vertical jump as Calvin Johnson but he's enjoying it. This guy's a special player. If he can get some continuity by way of structure, by way of who's throwing the ball to him, I think he could find himself in among the players like the Andre Johnsons down in Houston, the Larry Fitzgerald in, in uh, Arizona. This guy's a special athlete. You give a lot of credit to Sean Hill. He has been so impressive here today. We mentioned the one interception, but that's when Javid Best fell down. Right. And hit the book on Sean Hill has been not real impressive in practice. You're not like what you're going to see when you try him out, but he's kind of a gamer. He can make some things happen on the field. 13 plays, 80 yards, spanning nearly seven minutes to score. Prior to halftime, Jordy Nelson leveled and then springing loose away from the pack out to the 38 yard line. That ball may have been fumbled. It had to have been fumbled. Yep, they've got it. Detroit's ball, but you only got two seconds. I don't know if Calvin Johnson knows he might be coming out on the field offensively. Now they're going to try a field goal. This is a long one. This is this is a long one, but this young man now he's used to doing it in a dome, but he's got the leg. Does Jason Hansen to get this thing all but this wins not a huge factor here. What a turn of events for Detroit if they could come away with an extra three points here. Well, he's hit 42 field goals of 50 yards or longer in his career. Green Bay wants a timeout. And Hanson has been especially good here at Lambeau Field. Of course he's been the Detroit kicker for 19 years and you know, you're playing some very bad weather games. He is 20 of 21 in his career at Lambeau including a long of 52 trying to ice a guy who's played for 19 years don't know that it's going to affect him real bad here Tom they may be trying to orchestrate a specific uh, pressure on Hanson the thing you worry about with a field goal at this distance and obviously the percentages as you can see here go way down. The thing you worry about is the trajectory tends to have to be very low. He's got to drive this thing initially, which sometimes can lend itself to a block up the middle. Alrighty, here we go. From 55 yards away. Does it have enough leg? No. 
And that's the way the first half will come to an end. 21-14. Fox NFL Sunday continues with a Visa halftime report. After these messages and a word from your local Fox station. No. Callahan, you're on death duty. Turn in your weapon. Movies just got more awesome. Download and watch them on the go at 4G speeds with the epic 4G. The smartphone ranked number one by PC World. Fox Tomorrow, two of television's best are on one night. Snapalicious. First, when his favorite author wants to end it all, can house we wipe the... 21-14, moments away from the start of the third quarter alongside the coach, Brian Billick, Tom Brenneman, our entire Fox crew back here at Lambeau Field. You said you may have had one or two many brats before the game saying that Detroit had a chance. There might be people saying you had one or two of something else, but here they are. You've seen the talent. You've seen them be able to job at best. Uh, Calvin Johnson on the outside. If they can just stop stopping themselves, they've turned the ball over. Penalties almost stopped that last drive, but I'm very impressed that they overcame that emotionally to bring this back into a one score game. So as you look forward to the second half, Detroit will get the football. And a very important drive to try and get even right from the start for Jim Schwartz's team. Or the penalties. And that's what Brian's referring to if you're just tuning in. Nine of them for 77 yards. It started and looked like it might be easy for Green Bay today. On its opening possession straight down the field. A touchdown to Donald Driver from Aaron Rodgers. But Detroit answered. The first of two touchdowns for Calvin Johnson after a fumble. A touchdown to Jermichael Finley. Then they went up by 14 before the touchdown to Johnson just before the end of the half to make it a seven-point game. And Green Bay is up, but they have not looked real good. Aaron Rodgers has been lights out. They haven't had a lot of continuity, but they haven't necessarily needed it. They've been on a short field. They've scored on single plays. They need to run the ball better. They need, I'm sure Mike McCarthy wants them to look more fluid in what they're doing. And uh, Detroit, can you continue, can you continue to muster the emotional edge that you need to fight back in a place like Lambeau Field? Stefan Logan from the one. Run out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Let's check in downstairs with Carissa Thompson. Well, to pay off all the points you guys just mentioned, talking to Jim Swartz headed into the locker room, obviously very happy with the way that his team has moved the ball, the play of Sean Hill, but none too happy about those nine penalties. And also defensively, got to get more sound in that secondary. We saw how the Packers were able to run the ball early. Talking to Mike McCarthy, he wants to go back to that balanced attack, was not happy about those misconversions on third and one and wants to find that fluidity that you guys mentioned. Great stuff, Carissa. Thank you very much on first down and contact by Woodson and the flag comes in at the last second. Well, Johnson was looking for a flag immediately. Pass interference. Defense number 21. In the spot of the foul, automatic. First down. Kirk Dornan, the back judge, threw that flag on Woodson. Well, you're talking about a pretty good matchup right here between the defensive MVP of the league last year. Calvin Johnson, and you could, it was just that little pull and shove. He was fine. That last little pull on a big back like Calvin Johnson, sometimes that's what you got to do, or a big receiver like Calvin Johnson, you got to do what you got to do to stay close. First down from the 38, and nearly intercepted by the two time Pro Bowler Nick Collins. Take a look at the halftime statistics. Look at all the yardage piled up by Detroit 214 yards. Green Bay working on a short field on a pair of turnovers, but look at the penalties. Yeah, and part you can see here, you wouldn't have figured this. You'd have figured the score was the other way. Green Bay take advantage of turnovers and have scored on drives of two and three plays. He 
Blitz coming, he'll pick it up. And is that an interception? It is by Woodson. He's inside the 40, the 30. Woodson, touchdown. Payback. Payback's tough. Same kind of play. You know? Third all time. Career interception return for a touchdown behind Rod Woodson and Darren Sharper. Watch Woodson here with a little curl route again at the top. Woodson's all over it. Same amount of contact. Looked like Calvin Johnson rolled into the route. More to the inside than Sean Hill was expecting. He was kind of throwing it at the top of the route. Woodson kind of fell into that one and took advantage of it. We have a challenge from the Detroit sideline to take a look at whether or not Woodson caught that ball, whether he trapped it, whether it hit the ground. The ruling on the field is an interception for a score. It's being challenged by Detroit. And it's worth the challenge. This is obviously a huge swing worth the challenge. The call on the field being challenged by Jim Schwartz, head coach of Detroit, as to whether or not this was an interception. And interception is the call on the field. Yeah, and I don't know that we've seen anything to turn this over. Don't have a real clean view, but it looks like his hands are underneath it. There's no movement of the ball. The different views we have of it clearly looks like he scooped it out. This looks like it's going to stand for the Green Bay Packers. Which means if you don't know if you challenge and you lose the challenge in this case for Detroit you lose a timeout. And that's the verbiage the official will use if he says that the call stands it means that they didn't have any view that changed their mind. If he say says the call is confirmed it means they had the video evidence that says yes it was what it was. Well, what a turnaround in a career for Charles Woodson, a number one pick out of the University of Michigan, originally with Oakland. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Detroit will be charged with their first team timeout. Charles Woodson now has 29 interceptions in 66 games with Green Bay in over a hundred games with Oakland he had 17 interceptions of those returned for a touchdown eight of the ten in his career have been with the Packers point after is good by Crosby third turnover for Detroit and a two touchdown lead for the pack Forcing turnovers and then getting points off the turnovers. 14 of them today for Green Bay. And that really should be 17, right, Tom? Because at the minimum, they turned the ball over in scoring position. That would have been a minimum of three points, could have been another seven. So it's not just the points that have led to directly, but it's points that they didn't get in scoring position. So now back to a 14 point deficit. And Logan, a nice return. He's up to the 31 yard line. We ask you to please support the NFL's a crucial catch breast cancer awareness campaign. You can bid on authentic game day NFL pink products and experiences at NFL.com slash auction and all proceeds benefit the American Cancer Society. We thank you. It's great to see the way the players coaches the league officials have have picked up on this Tom and seeing the pink everywhere. Not necessarily a great fashion statement <laughs> in the NFL. Well, you look very handsome. I do. Well, I've always looked good in pink. What do you do? So. First down. Job at best. Across the 35 to the 37. Nice run on first down. Tripped up by A.J. Hawk. Job at best is going to have a good career in the NFL if he can stay healthy. He's a complete back, and, and interestingly, as coordinator Scott Lenahan says, they have total trust in him, including protections. They trust him in knowing who to block, how to pick it up. He seems to be a complete player.
Best out of the backfield. And beats a would-be tackler and dives forward close to a first down. Needed to get to the 41. Well, again, it looks like Detroit has some rhythm about what they're doing. Run the ball a little bit, throw the ball down the field. Scott Lanahan just has got to hope that they can stay away from the penalties and the turnovers, which have really been the things that have stopped this offense thus far. Third and two. They're going to run it. Jerome Felton. And their bruising fullback has a first down up to the 45. Sean Hill, a pair of touchdowns, a pair of interceptions. The first one is when Javid Best fell down. Calvin Johnson, a pair of touchdown catches. He only had one score through the first three weeks of the season. I'm not sure that second interception was all him either. I think the receiver maybe bent the route in a little further than what he was anticipating. Johnson isolated on Woodson and it's slightly overthrown. Let's go back to Los Angeles and check in again with Kurt Menefee. Second straight week, the Super Bowl champion Saints having trouble at home. This time it's Carolina. D'Angelo Williams, 39 yards on the touchdown run, and the Panthers lead the Saints in the third quarter, 14 to 10. A little surprise there, Tommy Bryant. My, oh my, what a developing story that is. When those two teams play, and we had a couple of those yeah, games last year, Brian. Those are good football games. Those are as physical games as you'll see. Best. And he picks up close to nine. It'll bring up third and short again for the Lions. And Java Best is a good single back running back. By that I mean you don't have to put a big fullback in front of him. You can be in your two tight end alignment that they like in Detroit, your three wides, and run the traps and the draws and the quick off tackle plays that you do out of the single back offense. He's suited very well to that style of running attack. Well, 32 a moment ago, they gave it to their fullback. That's not going to happen this time. He split wide to the left. Pump fake one way. And Brian Johnson a first down inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. Nice play design by the Detroit Lions. Java Best just kind of flared out real quick to the right. Pulled a lot of coverage with him. And then you just trail it underneath with Brian Johnson. Now that they don't want to see this with Calvin Johnson on the sidelines. You approach that red zone, you need to get that big body back in the game. We'll keep an eye on him on the sideline. Some pressure coming from Green Bay. That was a forward pass. And incomplete to Kevin Smith. Second down and 10 for the Lions. 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. And I imagine Sean Hill on any given pass play has an immediate quick outlet should they present the pressure that the typical Dom Capers coach defense will bring you by way of the Green Bay Packers. That was his quick outlet pass there, seeing pressure from the Packers on that down. Calvin Johnson back on the field. Great protection and they find Calvin Johnson. He fumbled the ball but they said he was down. Also lost his helmet. But that's another conversion to move the chains inside the 25. Just down here Calvin Johnson again they've stacked them on top of one another. They do this to break up coverage to make the defense have to pass off or bracket off the coverage. Charles Woodson getting the duty on Charles Johnson or excuse me Calvin Johnson. That's a big body once he gets inside position. He's not going to give it up. They go right back to Johnson. Why would you. That's a nice play by Charles Woodson and Jared Bush. 
Again, a nice re emotional response by the Detroit Lions. I mean, you have the turnover, Woodson in the end zone, you're down by two scores. They have not blinked. They've come right back like they've done the series before and march down the field. It needs to convert into points, but you got to like the way that the Detroit Lions are responding emotionally. Second down and eight. Stephon Logan, they bring him in, set up the play for him, and it went right through his hands and was nearly intercepted by Jared Bush. They've been thrown a little too hard there. Yeah, this this is a tougher pass than you think. That's a lot of RPMs on a pass that just kind of needs to be thrown like a dart. <laughs> Johnson split wide to the right on third and eight. What a throw and then out of the hands of Johnson. No pedigree, I beg your pardon. Yeah, missed opportunity there. Beautiful throw by Sean Hill. You're going to see Pettigrew right here goes to a quick seven route again stacking on top of it has air to it. It's got to get up and down quick because the safety is going to clo close on it just needed to bring it into the body and hold on to it. Yeah I've got to obviously finish it all the way through the process the key word the NFL now too bad would have been a key conversion for Detroit. 39 yard field goal try by Hanson and this one is good from Jason Hanson. So points on the board for the Lions, a 28-17 lead. Pretty good game here, 9.26 to play in the third quarter. NFC North matchup, Green Bay 28, Detroit 17. And Detroit has responded well. You know, it's been a long time since they've won in this state. Goes way back to the times when they used to play games in Milwaukee. I miss those games. I love being on the Old same. County Stadium. Oh, being side by side. Had some great times in Old Milwaukee Stadium. Well, Green Bay has not had the ball offensively in this half. The interception return for a touchdown, of course, by Charles Woodson. Jordy Nelson brings it out to the 29-yard line. So. Rogers try to stay warm over there. We'll take the field when we come back. Go to NFL.com's Game Center for week four live game stats, fan discussions, in-game video highlights, and more only at NFL.com slash scores. Here's a real cheese head. Check. You can see this secondary rotation here is what bringing about these run checks. Away and again is to Jackson who breaks a couple of tackles and Brandon Jackson out to the 42 yard line. You know, I'm starting to ask you, Brian, you talk about continuity on offense, fluidity on offense. Can you have that if you don't run the ball? No, and that's going to be the challenge for the Packers here here they're checking to a run because of the secondary they have got to establish this running game when they want to run the ball if they expect to go on a playoff or a Super Bowl run this year they've yet to show that ability so far they say lost their star back Ryan Grant for the year the season opening and the ball is loose on the field there is a flag down on the field there is movement on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Vanden Bosch and Chad Clifton. Ball was recovered by Clifton. Offside, defense number 93. Five yard penalty, still first down. Now that's happened twice, Tom, and I think what's happening is, is on when you see right here on the interior of the line, the guards are signaling to the quarterback when it's time to snap the ball, either with the hip tap or they turn back when they come back. The defensive line, Kyle Van de Bosch, been in this league a long time, is trying to time that up. It's betrayed him twice now. He's had two offsides penalties.
catch is made by Jennings. That's the first down of the 45. You know, this is a key part of what you see with Green Bay, this distribution between Mike McCarthy loves to roll personnel per, uh, groupings through. Regular, two back, and a tight end. Double tight ends, obviously. Three wides, four wides even. A constant keeping the defensive coordinator, Gunther Cunningham, for the Detroit Lions off uh, rhythm in terms of what are you going to throw at me because I'm going to throw a lot of personnel groupings at you. Blitz coming, they pick it up. Wide open is James Jones, his first catch today. And that's a first down, a gain of 15. So here it is. Now change it up. Different group coming in. That stretches the defensive coordinator. It's kind of, they changed his mind here. They decided, now nah, let's set this one out. But it does. It pushes a defensive coordinator. You can have a large package, but if I got to keep up with you now and wait and see what personnel groupings in, it tends to back off the number of different packages I want to take into the game. Gunther Cunningham trying to dial up the right one here. Flag down. And it's intercepted and then a lateral. And another flag comes down. It may have been a forward lateral after the interception, but let's see what the first flag is all about. That might be the one that determines whether this interception stands. Chris Houston intercepted the pass and lateral to Delmas, who looked to be about a step in front of him. Mike Carey's having to sort something out here now. And Aaron Rodgers is clapping over there as if to say the first penalty is against Detroit as well. Well the second penalty is post interception. Mm -hmm. So they'll at least they'll get the ball but let's see what this one is. There are two fouls both on the defense. Offside number 75 is accepted five yards first down. Illegal forward pass after the interception is declined first down. Here you're going to see the jump number 75. And, and again they're trying to get a jump on the ball right here. I'm not sure if I saw the movement there or outside. But they're trying to get the jump on this snap count. You got a veteran quarterback like Aaron Rodgers that can change up the count. And obviously it's caught him. This is I think the third one now. Detroit's got to rethink what it is they're hearing or seeing to try to get a jump on the offensive line because it's cost them a couple times now. That is 11 penalties for almost 90 yards. It looked like he was lined up offside. Number 75. Uh, he, I don't know. He, he, I think he's mad at his own guys going, gosh, all money, guys. You got to line up right at the very least. Rodgers looking around to the end zone. And as Jennings, did he get the feet down to say no? Aaron Rodgers doing a nice job throwing the ball the only place he could. It was either going to be a touchdown or not. Give his receiver a chance. Of course, the crowd's question. Let's see right here. Just skates to the back outside. No, nope, looks like that left foot clearly was out of bounds before he had control. Yep, right foot's down, but that left foot just catches the pylon. Yeah. Not going to happen. Good call. Brandon Jackson tries to cut it back to the inside, and he's tripped up. It'll bring up third down and a little less than four. And this goes back to what you mentioned earlier, Tom. When you're in a second five or six, you've got in the red zone, you've got to be able to run the ball better. You've got to get more production out of it. Obviously, the loss of Ryan Grant was a big hit for them. I don't know that they don't have confidence in their running game, but obviously, they got a lot of their assets to go to. They would love to get a running game cranked up between now and as they work their way into the playoffs. It's coming they pick it up again and it's intercepted and this time it will stand. 
Houston intercepted the last pass. It was overruled by a penalty. And this time he comes away with the interception that will stand up. That's a big one. A rare one by Aaron Rodgers. Just underthrows the ball. Just a bad throw. Twenty eight seventeen a turnover in the red zone only the second career interception thrown by Aaron Rodgers in the red zone. He was very upset with himself after he let it go. And now the Lions down twenty eight seventeen. And it's up to the 14 yard line on the carry by best. I guess technically it was just outside the red zone. I beg your pardon. Yeah, well, I don't, I'm not sure what it is they were trying to do here. You got Jennings down here at the bottom. If this was supposed to be a fade stop on the back shoulder, it's just underthrown. And the way Aaron Rodgers is reacting, you get the sense that Jennings didn't do something. But I can't for the life of me figure out what, where he thought Jennings was going to break, maybe undercut the DB. Hard one to figure out there. Wide open is Scheffler, the tight end. Tries to cut up the field, loses his footing, but it's a first down to the 27. Let's send it back to Kurt Menefee for a game break. The Jets crushing the Bills behind LaVanian Tomlinson. 133 yards and two touchdowns, including this 26 order. Jets up 38 to 7. LT with his best day rushing in the 2007 Tom Bryant. Nice to see LaDainian Tomlinson playing it so is. well again. It is. Class player yeah. and uh, fits in perfectly for his role with the Jets. Job at best for a couple of yards. Tripped up by Nick Barnett. Well, the, the Detroit Lions have pulled this back in close enough to where they're running a more orchestrated offense we saw them when it was a two touchdown differential they kind of opened it up and almost in a no huddle or two minute form Scott Lennon now going back to his game plan see if he can get something started and generate here they've thrown to the tight ends a lot when they've motioned best out of the backfield here they go back to Shuffler and he's shot down by A.J. Hawk up to the 31 yard line it brings up third down and five what they're doing is expanding the formation out by motioning a job at best outside the core of the formation and watching what the adjustment is inside by the linebackers and a couple times now Scheffler's been wide open as the defense expands to account for it. Blitz coming and lots of running room a first down and then some for Hill across midfield cuts it back to the inside and finally takes a knee at the 30 yard line for the former option running high school quarterback Sean Hill. Yeah this is just everybody's manned up and when everybody's manned up and the quarterback the one guy that has nobody on him is the quarterback and that's exactly what's happened here you got DB's probably still running down the field thinking the receiver has to be covered and this you're right he was an option quarterback who was recruited by a punter that was the only scholarship he was he was offered out of high school went to junior college because he wanted to play quarterback Kevin Smith. Maybe Nice to see Smith back on the field. We talked about earlier his first two years in the league. This guy played very well. A third round pick in 2008 out of Central Florida. Where he had nearly 4,900 career rushing yards. A nice change up between a bigger back like Smith and job at best here who's going to give you that explosive single back style of running attack. Well, you see his first two years in the league. Those are good numbers. You throw in 80 receptions out of the backfield, they look even better. He picks up the block on Barnett, and Hill throws it away. Hill took a hit. 
Boy, those are the ones that scare you when a quarterback, in order to avoid an, a complete an interception or excuse me, an incompletion, just turns and heaves it up. Stafford can't. He says, "I wouldn't have got that far. <laughs> I'd have slid. I'd have slid a lot earlier." He had no idea his, his, uh, his buddy Sean Hill could go that long. Longest run in the career of Hill. It's a third and nine. Ah, don't tell me again. Delay. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. You know, you can't lay all this on losing football for 20 years. No. No, that's just that's just focus and discipline. You have to not that you're not focused elsewhere, but as you approach the red zone, since day one in training camp, you talk about an increased consciousness of where you're at and what has to be done. This just kills you. The third and nine is now third and 14. They're buying some time looking and throws it away. And now obviously it makes it that much more difficult if you're thinking about a field goal try. This is a very long field goal try. And you got to keep in mind where you're going to turn around and give Green Bay the ball back. If you don't make this it's not just uh, where it comes out to the 20 and and uh, I mean there is a cost at this Green Bay Packers are going to get this in great field position if you miss this very long field goal. 52 yard try for Hanson. He got nailed it. it and he nailed it. Well, he's been around since 1992. He's been one of their best draft picks ever. Yeah, which is part of the problem. I think they'll cheer him properly. Are you kidding they me? They will. But then as soon as the game starts, they'll want to rip his head off and pour their beer down the limp corpse. I promise you. But I think they'll do the right thing coming out. <laughs> Led him to the NFC Championship game five times. Guy won a pile of games. And there's still a lot of Philly fans that are unhappy that he's no longer there. We've got a ball game here. Less than two minutes to play in the third quarter. Jordy Nelson's Packers ahead 28-20. Uh, Nelson out to the 25-yard line. So let me get this straight. You're going to boo McNabb and you're going to cheer Michael Vick. Well, yeah, that's hey, it's uh, pro football. You know, what have you done for me lately? And when you look at those numbers, Philly fans are all about winning. They're going to look at those numbers and forgive you a lot of things. If you can continue to throw that many touchdowns, no interceptions, that's the impressive thing with Michael Vick right now. Well, it would be nice if they cheer for McNabb. I think they will. Think they I, will. Think they I hope they do. Jackson wrapped up by Dominican Sue right at the line of scrimmage, maybe lost a yard or two. What do you think of Sue? You've seen him play on tape uh, his first three games in the NFL. You know, we talked about Tom. We had their very first game. This guy is going to be a force. He is still learning what it is to not be a two-gap player like he was in, in uh, Nebraska. That's where you you hold up the offensive lineman and take the gap on either side to be aggressive take a gap and go this guy is a force and seems to get getting better with every game. In the traffic. No flag the coverage by C.C. Brown. Andrew Michael Finley. We talked about Sue and Jim Schwartz was saying that. You know this guy carries himself like he's been around the league a while. A, a quote from him after the game last week. It's simple. Until we play our best game, and the coaches and players agree that was our best, and we still lose, then it becomes a problem. And that shows a maturity that you don't expect out of a young player. And, and Jim Schwartz talked about that. That he loves this guy's demeanor, and that's this is the kind of guy he wants to build this franchise around. Big play for the Lions on defense, third and ten, and down goes Rodgers. 
in the arms of the aforementioned Dominican Sue. It's like we talked about that inside pressure is a killer. We've seen it by Raji and Jenkins for Green Bay. And now with Ndamukong Sue now, nice athleticism exploding to the quarterback when he gets the opportunity. That inside pass rush presence is huge for a team. Already three sacks for an interior lineman. That's an impressive number in his first little more than three and a half games in the league. Now the punt by Mastin and a good one chasing Logan back to the 28. But a nice return by Stefan Logan, an excellent field position for the Lions, starting from their own 43 down by eight. Now let me ask you a question. When you're standing on a sideline right now, and it's an eight-point game, are you already thinking that if we score a touchdown, whether or not you're going to go for two, or is it way too early to be even thinking like that? Standard thinking tends to be, I'm going to wait till the middle of the fourth quarter before I think about that. Now. If I'm Jim Schwartz in the Detroit Lions and I'm in Green Bay and I haven't been one here in what is it 19 years we said. Yeah you got to think about going for two. It is a one score game and the way this game's gone. I would be surprised if he didn't go for two should he get a touchdown. Best on the ground. And he's run out of bounds That's after a pretty nice pickup. One second remains. In the third quarter. Javid Best has come back to carry it 10 times for 46 yards today, and that is the end of the quarter. Fox NFL Sunday continues after a word from your local Fox station. The last time the Lions beat the Packers in Wisconsin, you have to go back to 1991. No such thing as Fox Sports. Brett Favre. They only knew him at Southern Mississippi, drafted by Atlanta. And Johnny Carson is still with us on a Tonight Show. But here they are, down eight. With very good field position, and Javid Best with a first down after the reception. And a late flag comes in from a secondary. I think this is going against Green Bay, and we'll tack on some more yards. Personal foul, major face mask, defense number 50, 15 yards, automatic. First down. That's against A.J. Hawk. Yeah, comes in here. We've seen, we've had two of these now, and it's kind of all of a sudden, I don't know, that one kind of grazed it. I don't know that I saw any turn of the helmet, but you come close to the face mask. I think he was a victim of circumstances there. Detroit will take it nonetheless. Ball at the Green Bay 32. Great protection. Catch by Kevin Smith. Let's check in downstairs with Carissa. Well, guys, Coach Schwartz told us earlier in the meetings this week that one thing he learned from Jeff Fisher was to stay the course. Have confidence in your system. Don't fly off the handle and start changing things. That's definitely a reflection on this sideline. There's a very good energy. Even after, after the missed opportunity for a touchdown a few series ago, Brandon Pettigrew came to the sideline, started clapping his hands, patted Sean Hill on the back. So a very good energy despite the penalties and the deficit, guys. Marissa, thank you. Second and nine. Nice play by A.J. Hawk. Scheffler wanted a flag, but Hawk able to knock it down. Let's go back to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Ravens give up the fewest yards in the league. Steelers the fewest points, so no surprise. A low scoring game in the fourth quarter. Richard Mendenhall, though, puts the Steelers out front. His second touchdown of the game. Pittsburgh leads it 14 10. Midway through the fourth quarter. Tom and Brian. What do we say about the ability to run in the red zone when you want to run? Pittsburgh Steelers, the poster boy for that. Third down and nine. Did Pettigrew hang on or is that another drop? Boy, he has had major issues as good as Pettigrew has been. He has had a number of big drops already this season, but maybe none bigger than that one right there. 
Well, he had one earlier, obviously, that was going to put him down deep in the end or deep in the red zone as well. Nice scramble by Sean Hill. Nope. Clearly didn't have control going down. Boy, two big drops. And you're right, Brandon Pettigrew is someone that has shown that he can be a big time NFL player. Those are two big drops. Will be a 49 yard attempt by Hansen. He is still so oh impressive. Boy. My goodness. Jason Hansen brings the Lions within five. Twenty eight twenty three nearly an entire fourth quarter to be played here at Lambeau Field in Green Bay Wisconsin the heavily favored Packers have their hands full. Well this is a bit you're, Jim Schwartz coming in under a one score game in the fourth quarter it had made a deal with the devil for that one saying I'll take it give my team a chance to win it in the fourth quarter. Playing one of the all time great Wisconsin songs, Roll Out the Barrel. Chicken Dance is coming up next. Jordy Nelson from the five. Ball is loose. Oh, baby. And Detroit has it. The hit made by Ashley Palmer and covered up by Stefan Logan. Oh, my, how things have changed in Green Bay. Special teams again Jordy Nelson this is just a good solid hit ball comes out just the kind of break OK now we're evened up you gave we gave the ball to you in scoring position Green Bay now you've given it to us now let's see if we can even this thing up huge huge turnaround for Detroit now a chance to take the lead for the Lions. Robert Best, not a real big guy, and he can get lost behind those big offensive linemen. But he carries his pads very well. He carries his pads like a big man, Tom. He gets positive, positive yards. This guy, uh, this guy's a special back. The way he carries himself, he carries himself like a powerful back, but has the feet to go lateral and the explosion and burst to take advantage of it when he gets a hole. All of a sudden the turnovers are even. Hill lays it off to Best. Cuts it back to the inside. It's first and goal at the six. And Tom, most people will tell you in the red zone, yeah, you can take shots to the end zone, but it usually takes a player that get the ball in his hands and let him make a play in the red zone. That's what John and Best does. Not only just the draws and the traps, but to dump the ball off like that. He's going to. He's the kind of guy that can make a player or two miss and get you those coveted scores with having to, without having to force it into the end zone. Play fake to Best. And a jump ball for Johnson. Great coverage. Double coverage, in fact. Woodson in front of him. And Collins behind him. You know, another thing, you can really earn the respect of your teammates. And we saw it with Matthew Stafford last year in the Cleveland game when he hurt his shoulder, came back to throw the game when he touchdown pass. Best playing with turf toe yep. on the left foot and the right foot. And and they weren't sure up until the last day of practice he was going to be able to go. Didn't look like it on Wednesday and Thursday, and then Friday fought back through it. A second and goal. Here rolling, rolling to the corner. Dangerous throw there. Too late a throw. Closing quickly, Tremon Williams in the end zone. He may have been able to run that in. Yeah, and things just happen quicker down in the red zone. Why? Because you don't have as much ground to cover. That ball needed to be gone now instead of just that count late, maybe pulling it down once he saw it, pull it back in. He might have been able to go in. Third and goal. Trap or draw action, maybe here. 
Only a three-man rush and another dangerous throw in the air. And broken up again by Tremont Williams. So here comes the field goal unit yet again. Frustrating not to come up with the touchdown, but you're talking about a five-point differential. This field goal, if it should go in, now means you're a field goal from winning. So, you know, there's a point that you could say, hey, you're on the road, you're in Lambeau Field, go for the touchdown. Going for the field goal here clearly is the way to go. 24-yard field goal try from Hanson. He's missed from 55, but has hit his last two. And has hit his last three. Still a long way to go. 11.51 to play. It's a two-point game. Take a look at the first half. 154 yards of offense for the Packers. Here in the second half, 120 less. And Jason Hansen, low these many years, the Lions' all time leading scorer, has been so impressive again here today. Short kick, Nelson, who fumbled his last try. And he is. Wrapped up at the 22 and took a big hit. Will it be Bobby Cox and the Braves? Three teams still duking it out on this final day of the regular season. Rodgers looking for a bundle on first down, and the Jennings win. No, it's taken away and intercepted by Alfonso Smith. Fourth turnover of the game for Green Bay. That is a big time interception. Just literally took the ball away from Jennings. Stride for stride, allow this little hand fighting. Looks like Jennings had a chance, but then Smith just over the top of him, wrestled it to the ground. Big time interception. Green Bay needed to do something with that ball. I understand going for the big shot. They haven't been on the field much in the second half. Right now, Detroit, everything emotionally is going Detroit's way. Smith, a high round draft choice just a year ago for Denver. Detroit made that trade at the end of training camp to get him. And that's his first interception with the Lions. And on first down, across the middle of the field, and the catch is made by Felton up to the 46 yard line. You know, Sean Hill reminds me, and I'll be careful here now, I'm not going to go over the edge. He reminds me a little of Philip Rivers in the sense that it doesn't have a pretty delivery. It seems a little awkward and disjointed, but the ball gets to where it needs to be most of the time. Job is best. And a late flag comes in. Play like that, typically a hold. Holding. Offense number 77. 10 yard cover is still second down. Sherilis has had a couple of those today at right tackle. Number one pick out of Boston College two years ago. And those are such quick hitting plays with a cutback when you have contact with a player and at the last minute he pulls back away from you. Hard not to hang on. Second down and 13. They need to get to the 39 for a first down. Scheffler across the middle. And gets up to the 33 yard line, which will bring up third down and six as we close in on the 10 20 mark. Well, we've evened it up a little bit. In terms of the points off turnovers, the biggest difference right now is Green Bay with a turnover in the red zone came away with the touchdown. Detroit came away with three points.
Very close to a first down on a carry by Hill. It will depend on a spot. It looks like he has enough. Yeah, I think they're spotting him on the 40. That's enough for a third down conversion. You know, Detroit uncharacteristically been pretty good on third down today. That's been part of their issue with the three and outs I alluded to earlier. Right now, I tell you what, they, they're, they're doing a good job. Nine out of 15. Hill is their leading rusher today. Four carries for 53 yards. Of course, 40 of those on one burst in the third quarter. Bryant Johnson, and that didn't full play Matthews or anybody else. That's a loss of three. Yeah, the, the thing you didn't expect coming in, look at the time of possession. We saw that last week, Tom, when we did the Atlanta New Orleans game, and it led to points right now uh, for Detroit. That's good to have, but it needs to lead to more points. You can see that lack of continuity I'm talking about at Green Bay. It's hard to get yourself going when you don't have the ball. Blitz coming. Scheffler. To the 43 yard line. It'll bring up a third down and seven. So here we go on third and long again for the Lions. Well, so far they've been able to convert. This is typically where you will tend to get some pressure because they're looking for that quick dump off throw and rally up to stop you short of the conversion. But when that dump off can be to a job at best or Kevin Smith concerns you a little bit. They look like they're a little more passive right now. They need to get to midfield for a first down, and that they'll get. As this time, Pettigrew hangs on to the Green Bay 40. I talked about the ability to drop it off underneath. He had the back underneath. He's just got to drop it into the hole. He wasn't throwing to the receiver. That was the hole in the defense. He knew that Pettigrew had to get there. Read the lips of Matthew Stafford. Nice throw. And it has been a very impressive day for Hill, who's now thrown for 331 yards. Best. Nice tackle made by Woodson. At the 37, quickly we go to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Donovan McNabb taking the field early in his big return to the link. <laughs> Getting some love from the few fans that are there early and his teammates, or ex-teammates as well. Game two of our Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader comes our way just as soon as you are done. Pick Charles and Jim. And again, you look at the numbers between the two quarterbacks. That's coming up next. But first things first, we've got 6.50 to go. And a three-point lead for Green Bay. Hill throws down the middle and it's batted away. A sensational defensive play made by Charles Woodson. Just got his hand on the ball. That would, That's a huge save for them because they clearly would have been inside full field goal range. The clock at 643 is slowly becoming a factor because we're back at a three point game. Watch Woodson trail here just in the way when you got two deep man underneath coverage you're allowed, you can jump an underneath route like that. Nice break up by Charles Woodson. They converted a pair of third and long on this drive and here's another. Need to get to the 28 jailbreak and Woodson Bats it away. Detroit looking for a flag, and it's a flag that won't come. So now the Lions forced a punt with 6.39 to go. Boy, Woodson steps up on this drive. Boy, yeah, and let's remember, he is the reigning defensive MVP now. You're going to go after someone. I know, I realize that's Calvin Johnson, but that Charles Woodson's been around for a while. He's pretty darn good. Now, Woodson got away with one there. If not the play before. End over end punt by Harris. And a fair catch is made by Williams. 6.32 to play. Twenty-eight twenty-six. Green Bay leads at home. 
632 to go. Look at Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and that's that lack of continuity in the second half. They just haven't had the ball. Uh, Mike McCarthy's got his full play sheet because he hasn't had to call anything in the second half. Couple of interceptions here in the half by Rodgers. Kuhn takes a pitch. And is tripped up by Delmas. And that'll be a gain of seven on first down. Well, Green Bay desperately trying to find a combination of backs or backs between Jackson and Kuhn to be able to roll through here. To be able again this in this situation you're up by two points you want to be able to run time off the clock physically run the ball as you want to run it. This is the place to do it. Turn the first down up to the 25. That'll chew up some time as we're under six minutes. I'm a little surprised that Detroit is configured in kind of a passive alignment. They were in a two deep shell there. They obviously believe their front seven can stop this running game of the Packers. I'm not sure they're not going to have to bring CC Brown down into the box to make sure that the Packers don't just run this timeout or run through the end of the game, and not give them a chance to to pull ahead. First down, they're going to throw it. Donald Driver. For another first down up to the 38 yard line. You know, it's amazing how stats can tell you a story, and boy, can it be a bold faced lie. You look at last week in Chicago, where Green Bay outgained the Bears by better than 100 yards. But you throw in the penalties, you turn over all the mistakes, Green Bay loses. Here, Green Bay statistically being dominated today, yet winning with 4.40 to go. Again, you're looking at Shell, probably a run. Yep. And Jackson wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage by Turk McBride. And, and when you've got a front seven like Detroit, they're very confident in this group right here. They know that they're in a shell. They know Rodgers has been checking it. The way they pinch down on the end here, good aggressive front. What Green Bay has typically done here after this check to a run is run a play fake and then throw after. We'll see if they stay consistent with it here. Already into a passing configuration. Rodgers will run it. First down. And stays in bounds. Smart move. Smart move. How many guys would have run out of bounds, you know, in terms of he keeps it in bounds, keeps the clock running. Remember now, Aaron Rodgers coming out, flip, slip to the 24th pick. Here he doesn't see what he wants down the field. He knows he can't turn the ball over. It was a lack of athleticism that was the wrap on Aaron Rodgers as to why he fell. He's he's proved us all wrong because this kid's a pretty good athlete on top of it all. Of course, I didn't think that. I knew he was a good well, athlete. I, I, I remember you talking yeah, about what yeah, a great I, athlete I, he was. I wasn't one of those. That's why I'm up in a booth right now. You always said Coon would be a good runner. Yeah, he was on the top of my list. Let's go to a game break again in Los Angeles. Final minute in Pittsburgh. Baltimore's Joe Flacco. Hooking up with T.J. Husmanzada. Husmanzada's first touchdown as a Raven puts Baltimore up with 32 seconds left, 17-14. Of course, Pittsburgh now trying to march and at least tie it. Tom and Brian. Your old team, Brian Billick, you won a Super Bowl with the Ravens. Another barn burner. Always great games in Pittsburgh. Dormant Green Bay Green ground game has come alive. Well, the Lions have two timeouts left. And the clock will tick to the two-minute warning. 
It's amazing what a run game can do for you. minutes to play in Lambeau Field in Green Bay. Packers first down at the 39-yard line of the Lions. Six rushing plays on this drive for 36 yards. See everybody at the line of scrimmage here. If there's a place to throw, it would be here. They're going to throw it. Donald Lee is first catch of the day. Lee a forgotten man around here. He has had an outstanding career with the Packers. And gives them a great one-two punch at tight end. Well, you said it was a good spot to throw. You gonna call plays again sometime? <laughs> they play 63 yards. Chewing up. Better than four and a half minutes trying to put this game away with a two point lead. And now, run it again. Turn it again. Well, this is what we allude to to be able to finish out a game when you're in control of it all but by two points and to run the ball. That's what Mike McCarthy knows this team needs. He's loving the way they're finishing this thing out. They've not been in any kind of rhythm in the second half to be able to establish a run pass ratio if they want. But this last drive they're going to feel good about themselves if they indeed finish it out because they were able to do with their running game what you should do with your running game finish out a game. The court sitting on one more timeout. Probably spend it here. Well, they're not taking the timeout. Now yeah, they do. Yeah. He well, he's trying to get the officials' attention, but he, they got to do their job first. It's been a penalty-free drive for Green Bay as well. Well, we said coming in right for three things that killed them last year sacks penalties and special teams They've addressed the sack issue last year. They gave up 50 a league high this year They they're well below that the pace they're on now They'll end up in the mid teens, which is about one a game special teams. We saw special teams turnover uh, Detroit hasn't necessarily hurt them on special teams But it was a special teams turnover and penalties some of the penalties early on didn't necessarily affect them in an adverse way But if you're going to be a super Super Bowl team and they think of themselves that way. They got to correct those three things and they got to find a consistent running game. Third down. Any hopes for Detroit? Perhaps rest on this play. And that should put it to bed. Corey Hall just leveled Zach Follett, a lead block. And Kuhn, very close to a first down, appears to have it. I remember a Corey Hall from a little town, Glens Ferry, Idaho. A linebacker for Boise State on that team at Shock, Oklahoma. In the Fiesta Bowl. Just over pursuit by the Detroit Lions trying to get a stop here. Nice cutback. You can see that alley. He's able to come back in. Lunging for the first down. Nice, nice run. This is this is your favorite formation right here, man. Gonna do it. Green Bay will survive. And again for Detroit, you're so close. Are you not? Oh God, brutal, brutal. Somehow they gotta they gotta pull some strength from what the way they were playing. So for Brian Billick and Carissa Thompson, Tom Brenneman saying so long. 28-26 the final. Right now, let's go to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles.